Hey guys, Midwest Pricker here. It's December 26th, the day after Christmas. I hope everybody had a great Christmas. I did. It's been um, probably the most productive or busiest Christmas that I can remember. Just um, a week or so ago, we went to Orlando. That was a Christmas gift from the in-laws. And we went to Disney, did a bunch of stuff down there, and it was incredible. And then we have Christmas here at home, and then we're going to travel and visit relatives. So yeah, it's been busy, and it's been awesome. So... This is a what sold video and then I'm going to talk about what do you do when people um, I guess buy or purchase your items but then they don't pay for it. So if you're kind of new to eBay or reselling whether it's Macari or Poshmark I'm not 100% how they work but with eBay I have my business settings even though I'm not a business but I have settings in my eBay account that I have shipping and handling set for three days. So if you buy my item and pay for it, I have up to three days to bring it to the post office. And then it will take a certain amount of time to get to you. I typically bring it to the post office within 24 hours, sometimes 48 hours, but the three-day handling gives me a little cushion. Now there's a lot of controversy about that. If it's one-day handling, you can be a top-rated plus seller and have that um, you know, hallmark, and that does improve sales, definitely. Um, some people will filter, advanced filter, for searching for items, for free shipping, um, one day handling time, all that kind of stuff. So that would harm me a little bit, but I have to have that cushion because I'm part-time and I'm a hobbyist. The other thing is, which might not be smart, is I allow my customers three days to pay for an item that they purchase. Now, I figure that gives them a little bit of a cushion. You can make it so immediate payment is required. Um, most websites and e-commerce do that. If you go to Amazon.com, Walmart.com, uh, ZalesJewelry.com, when you buy something, you basically have to pay for it. Um, they do have little shopping carts on the website, and you could put it in that shopping cart and just leave it there for weeks and then come back later and pay for it. But you run the risk of the sale ending, the item not available anymore. Most people don't fill their like e-cart and their little fake shopping cart and then come back days and weeks later to pay for it. I would say 99% of the people that do e-commerce and shop online, they pick something they want and they pay for it. So stick around to the end of the video. I will talk about three items that were technically purchased but not paid for and then what did I do um, in those situations. I did get some new purchases right here as a vintage postcard. You can't really see it, so I'll put a picture on one of these sides. It's from 1915, and it was sent to Chicago. I got this at a restore. It was a buck. Um, it's framed up in this, ref um, it's a glass frame that's like a mirror reflected um, glass, and it's got an etched border. Um, not sure how old the frame is, but the postcard is, is stamped 1915. That's the nice thing about vintage postcards. They're pretty easy to date. Um, it's that date or older. Uh, from the picture, it's pretty old. They don't have a ton of value. Um, just the postcard alone, anywhere $4, $5, up to $20. They're kind of common. It's called an uh, actual photo or a real photo postcard, and they're collectible. Um, I believe the writing on the back, I don't know if I have a picture of that. I believe it's in a different language. I think it's Italian or Scandinavian or something like that. I can't read it. Um, I'll probably research it to figure out what it says. Um, if I was lucky, it would be somebody semi-famous back then, like a politician or radio star or somebody. I don't know. Um, but it's not worth a lot, but I just liked it because it looks really cool. And then this is the boilerplate. Now that's a figure of speech now. Um, if you are a student of the English language and you like cliches and figures of speech. I kind of do the origin of words and phrases. That's kind of like a hobby of mine. Um, boilerplate, you can look it up online. That's just a figure of speech, but this is an actual boilerplate, so that's where it came from. These are instructions on how to run a coal-fired boiler, and that would be, you know, riveted right to the boiler. Um, most people threw those away. They don't get saved a lot back in the day when they were used so it's got value to it I think I paid I don't know $25 for it maybe 30 it's in my really old Burley Park video I'll put a picture of the boilerplate up here um, if you're interested you can pause the video and read it it's kind of interesting it has a lot of instructions um, what else do I have 
I have a extra can't see it. I have an extra right there, an Enaman that's gonna be a Christmas present, which I won't say who to because it's still a surprise. Um, so yeah, I got all my lamps going, all my lighting. So let's get into it as far as what's sold. Um, again, a hundred doll pins. So I sold out of twelve thousand. I've sold three thousand of them. So that's pretty cool. Um, but this was a uh, hundred of them for three ninety-five. So they're slowly selling. This is a long tail item. Um, in my earlier videos, I told uh, the viewers I paid fifty bucks for twelve thousand of these doll pins, and then I have them listed a hundred, three hundred, six hundred, and a thousand, I believe. So they sell. It's just very slow. This next one is a photoelectric controller. Um, this is an industrial part. Um, I believe it's for outdoors and it, um, when it gets dark out it turns on a light, whether it's a security light or a street light, that kind of situation. Um, found these at a thrift store for a buck a piece. I bought three of them. They're all different models. Um, they got a lot of attention as soon as I put them up. And I did research the value. Not a lot of value, 12 to 15 bucks a piece. Um, this one was eleven ninety five. It sold immediately, like within a few hours. So I was thrilled. Um, the next one is an action figure from uh, Masters of the Universe. You might see the abbreviation MOTU. I think it's M O T U. Um, stands for Masters of the Universe. This is the He Man. He Man is the main character. This one is called the Faker. So this is like He Man's nemesis, and it's actually worth um, quite a bit of money if it's in good condition with all the accessories. Um, this one unfortunately did not have the accessories. It's just the guy. Um, I took a best offer of fifteen dollars. I think I listed it for nineteen ninety five, and it was up longer than I wanted. I think two months maybe. So somebody offered me fifteen. This is also a bit of trivia for the Midwest picker. This is my first sale to Canada. So more and more, I am putting my listings on eBay as calculated actual cost first class shipping and I'm including Canada so if it's a light item you might as well include Canada because the expense isn't that much and they pay for it anyways so I was watching I think um, Rakin Profits is a YouTube channel and he interviews a lot of people and he was interviewing a reseller and they said if you're not shipping internationally either through the global shipping program or directly you're losing out on millions of potential buyers and then also, if you're a little intimidated by international shipping, even through global shipping program, uh, consider Canada. If it's first class, if it's under a pound, use calculated shipping. eBay allows you to just include Canada only in no other foreign country, which makes it easier and it's shipped directly to them. Also, for our Canadian friends, it's much cheaper to buy that way direct than through the global shipping program. So if you're not familiar with the eBay Global Shipping Program, I'm not going to bore you with the details. But they have a facility, I believe it's down in Kentucky, and they handle a lot of the, the legwork and the hard stuff like customer returns, customer questions, um, the customs forms, and all the legalities of shipping to foreign countries. There's a lot of countries you're not allowed to ship certain items, and they filter all that out and they take care of all the problems, lost packages, you know customers claiming I never got it and all that they take care of all of that but they charge a lot of money to the buyer and I feel sorry for them if they live in Australia or Taiwan um, the shipping is huge I sold some Christmas bulbs Super Mario Christmas bulbs to this poor guy in Japan and the bulbs were only I don't know sixteen ninety five, and I included a uh, global shipping program First class, five dollars flat rate. I don't know what it was. It came in really close at fifteen ounces, but this poor guy um, paid like twenty-eight dollars in addition to the five dollars. And at the end of the day, he almost paid fifty bucks for these four bulbs that I was selling for. I don't know what did I say, sixteen ninety-five, seven, something like that. Less than twenty bucks, but he really paid a lot. I guess he really wanted them bad, but. Um, so I, I'm listing more and more items, calculated first-class shipping, including Canada, for smaller items. So that's my first item, so that was pretty cool. Um, next one is a relief valve. I've had this thing forever. I don't know where I'm putting the picture, maybe here. Um, this is just a little brass relief valve. This was at a big box hardware store that had a once-a-year clearance sale. These were customer returns or discontinued items. Um, super cheap. I think I bought this for a quarter 
and I sold it for uh, five bucks. I took a best offer. I had it listed for seven ninety five for a year, and I just wanted to get rid of it. Somebody just offered me five bucks, and it was gone. So I'm not going to do that again. Um, trying to get away from super long tail items just because you can buy something for a quarter and it's worth five bucks that's what I call auction fever I see those deals and I just can't not buy it so I'm trying to restrain myself and develop new habits to buy items with a bigger margin um, but these aren't bad it's, if it's just a hobby who cares it doesn't take up any space and it's small but I'm just tired of it taking so long to sell so I'm kinda done with that now so I had three items that I sold. One of them was the item mentioned, this brass relief valve. And then I sold a tool. I think I'll put the picture up here, maybe a picture here, and a book. And all three of them went unpaid. And it was three days, four days, because I mentioned earlier, I give my buyers three days to pay for it. I'm not in a big hurry. It's not going to break the bank. And kill me if they don't pay right away because I'm not a business if I was a business it would be a different story so after about four or five days I thought this is a little weird it's right before Christmas and then I realized there's a lot of people on eBay for the first time and there's a learning curve and they just might not get used to it or they don't know the rules um, it's their first time buying anything so I sent an invoice now when a buyer clicks on something and they agree to buy it eBay will send them an invoice but you can also in addition to that send them your own invoice with a little message now this learning curve I was talking about imagine if you're new to eBay and you see something you like and it says make offer so they make an offer and then I accept it well if you're new to eBay you might not know that you're obligated to now buy it so some people make offers and they just walk away. They never log back into eBay or check their email. They didn't realize that when they made an offer and it was accepted, they're supposed to buy it. So um, let's see, the book The book was purchased by a guy with only six feedback. So I'm going to assume he's either fairly new to eBay or doesn't use it very often. Made me an offer, I accepted it, never heard from him again. So um because it's Christmas and I'm a nice guy, I sent him an invoice and it's been over a week. So it was like it was December 19th. So I sent him another, a second invoice today. The guy that bought this Black & Decker tool, I think it was before December 19th, I already sent him two invoices. So today I opened what's called an unpaid item case. So if it goes on, in, you can pick the time frame, but I wait about seven, eight days past when they're supposed to pay for it um, I open an unpaid item case with eBay so what eBay will do is they'll send kind of like a stern email or notice to the buyer and say look you agreed to pay for this you need to buy it you either cancel the order or you pay for it if we don't hear from you you're gonna you're gonna get a knock on your account I don't know what phraseology they use but they tell they tell this potential customer you're, you're gonna get a, a knock on your account um, a negative check and that's not good so I think it's four days I can go back and tell eBay whether the person paid for the item or canceled the order or whatever or whatever happened um, if they don't pay after four days I can tell eBay eBay will cancel the order and then they'll refund me my final value fee for the sale so I will get my fees back um, or the person could pay for it and then I have to ship it or the buyer could contact me and say I'm sorry you know whatever excuse whatever reason I want to cancel the order I have no problem with that at all I just tell eBay the order has been canceled per customer request not my request their request and then again you'll get your fees refunded to you I would rather do that and relist the item because these are pretty good items that are gonna sell um, just don't say you're going to buy it and then disappear and fall off the face of the earth and not contact anybody. Um, so it's no hard feelings. It's it's just business. You know, I just have to sell the item. So um, I'm very nice about it when I message them. Sometimes people click on something and they forget they did that. Um, sometimes they find it cheaper somewhere else and they buy it somewhere else and they forget to go back and cancel the order. So I always assume positive intent. I never assume that they're trying to rip anybody off you know people make mistakes I just want to clear it up get my fees back and then I want to be able to relist so 
Um, so that's it today. Those are unpaid item cases. You can research that. Um, eBay has a good frequently asked questions page if you search that term unpaid item uh, unpaid item case or you can also google it too so um, if this is your first time here hit that subscribe button and then you'll get notified when I have new videos ask me any questions you want down in the comments would you handle unpaid items differently would you be more stern than I was would you be kinder than I was has it happened to you because of Q4 and Christmas, have you noticed an uptick in unpaid items? Um, what I am excited for is Q1 coming up really soon next week. People get these eBay gift cards for Christmas, so then they hop on eBay usually right away and they start making purchases. So I think January is going to be just as busy as December. So that's cool too. So that's it, guys. Merry Christmas to everybody. I hope it was well for everyone. Um, these are the items that sold. These are my unpaid item cases. And if I forgot to mention the guy with the brass relief valve, he paid right away when I sent him an invoice like that fast. He paid. So two are still outstanding. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching.